So Anne McLean and Nicole Ayers are starting to clear out the hatchway, and we are going to see the first views of Axiom Mission 4, Commander Peggy Whitson, the first one across the A-Path hatch, receiving great big hugs from Nicole Ayers and the Expedition 73 crew. Axiom at Mission 4, welcome aboard the International Space Station. Pilot Shibanshu Shukla is the next one to come across, representing ISRO. It is his first space flight for Peggy Whitson, her return to the International Space Station on her fifth flight, second as a member of Axiom Space. Sławo Szuznanski Wisniewski of ESA, representing the nation of Poland, and their first visit to the International Space Station is next to cross the hatchway. And warm hugs all around. And applause breaking out here inside of Mission Control Houston and International Space Station Flight Control Room and Tibor Kapu, the fourth and final member of Axiom Mission 4, representing Hunor and the nation of Hungary. Their first visit to the International Space Station as well. Two meters chop. Two station. Two meters chop. We have chop. One meter. One meter. Dragon contact and soft capture complete. Are you happy? Dragon Grace and the Axiom Mission 4 crew have arrived to the International Space Station at 5.31 a.m. Central Time over the North Atlantic as the two orbiting around the Earth. They spent more than 24 hours in orbit, and now the Axiom 4 mission crew is about to enter the International Space Station. The four astronauts docked the SpaceX Crew Dragon Grace spacecraft just a short time ago. Take a look at that really impressive footage. This historic mission is set to last about two weeks. CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood joins us now from the Kennedy Space Center. And Bill, you brought props. I love it. How did the flight go? What's happening with the docking? And help us ca catch us up on what's happening at this moment. Well, as you said, you know, they took off yesterday from the Kennedy Space Center. The ascent, the climb to space went perfectly. Uh, and the Crew Dragon capsule, that's, that's my prop today, uh, successfully docked after a 28-hour rendezvous. You know, it's, it's hard to, to realize it, but it's fully automated. This is an automated spacecraft. The crew can take over if they really have to. Uh, but the computer pretty much flies the ship, and it guided it to a picture-perfect docking at the forward module, Harmony, on the space station. Uh, they're doing leak checks. They're making sure that the docking is tight. They've got an airtight structural seal. Uh, and shortly, uh, later this morning, uh, the crew will come on board the station and get welcomed aboard. So uh, uh, quite, a nice, quite a nice ride so far. Yeah, Bill, and we're watching right now live footage coming to us from way above our heads in space. I'm not sure if you can see it and help us understand what's happening, but also explain why this is such a big win for SpaceX, getting this off the ground, and, and so far things happening is according to plan. Well, it's, it's always a win for the company that successfully gets a crew up into space, and certainly SpaceX is the only company in, a, in the United States right now that has an operational spacecraft that can carry astronauts. Uh, so, yeah, you know, it's, it's obviously a win for them that the flight's gone so well. You know, it, and we always forget nowadays, because they do it so often, uh, they successfully landed the first stage of that rocket uh, back at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station yesterday, so they'll be able to refurbish it and use it again in a future flight. You know, we all have memories of that giant Starship uh, rocket blowing up uh, on its last flight. Uh, so, so this is getting back to more normal activities for SpaceX, cargo and people to the International Space Station, and they've got a very good record doing that. 
Uh, this flight is, is continuing along those same lines. And so now so what, far. what happens once the crew is aboard the ISS? It's docked. They're about to open the door soon. Then what? Well, you know, the four crew members on board have a really busy schedule for two weeks of science experiments. There's a lot of public outreach. You know, three of the crew members are from different countries, India, Poland, and Hungary. They haven't had people in space now for decades. Uh, so it's a big deal in those countries, and they're going to be doing lots of events with school children uh, and things like that along to, alongside a full schedule of research. So it is no joyride for these people. They've got two weeks of very uh, concentrated work ahead, uh, but they've been training for it for a couple of years, and I think that uh, they're very eager to get going. Yeah, still looks like fun. A lot of hard work, but I'd like to float around up there. Bill Harwood, thanks so much. We appreciate you bringing the props and the knowledge. All right, NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has captured unprecedented images of what could be a new planet. The potential planet has a mass similar to Saturn and was seen orbiting around a young star called TWA-7. So scientists have named the planet TWA-7b. Very creative. The discovery marks the first time the Webb satellite has directly imaged a planet astronomers didn't already know about. 